The color of STEM is powered by the U.S. Department of Energy, the Emerging Technology Consortium, and the ARL Network. The color of STEM is more than television. It's a movement. Here we go. Dr. Emden has found that classrooms with the most success in engaging students in STEM have moved beyond teaching straight science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and taken a more interdisciplinary approach. Dr. Emden is keeping it real and dropping science. Meet Dr. Christopher Emden, the Associate Director of the Institute for Urban Science Education at Teachers College, Columbia University. He also is an alumni fellow at the Hutchins Center at Harvard University and currently serves as Minorities and Energy Ambassador for the U.S. Department of Energy and the STEAM Ambassador for the Department of State. My whole motivation has been the fact that folks or young people who are from the hip-hop generation are oftentimes perceived by society as being least able to do well in the tougher subjects. You know, so STEM is for the best and the brightest and kids from the hood, especially if you're into hip-hop, um, or you're anti-academic, you're not interested in academics, et cetera. And from the vantage point of a person who's been a scientist, um, you know, sort of worked with the ideology of schizophrenia and the mesenchymal stem cell research and did all that work before I got into education and being from the hood, I was able to identify young people who are from these communities who, who have the potential to do well. I mean, if I had the potential to do well in the sciences, I know young people who were more brilliant than me. Um, who were in those communities doing that work. And so I just started identifying the fact that brilliance knows no boundaries and brilliance goes beyond what we see as brilliant. And I wanted to show the world that young people, especially those who were engaged in hip hop, had these sort of academic wherewithal to be able to engage in these disciplines. And that was the motivation from the beginning. His motivation is evident in his Science Genius program, where he challenges students from New York City high schools to rap battles about science. The program has been a huge success. I'm not like some brilliant dude who was like, hip-hop battles in science. No, the, 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 the science in the hip-hop battle has already existed. All I was able to do is be a conduit through which we show the world how this can happen. Um, and the idea came to me, um, you know, just as a teacher. You know, I taught science and math for a couple of years in New York City public schools. And I knew that when I had kids rhyming about anything, they were more engaged. So I had them rapping about science and they were engaged. And I would use science examples from rap songs. Like when Lauren Hill said, two MCs can't occupy the same space at the same time. It's against the laws of physics. I was like, well, what, what law of physics is she actually talking about? And use that to have a conversation about physics. So this sort of organic, sort of natural predisposition for using hip hop in just my language connected to science. And then we just took it to the larger scale, um, you know, to be able to open it up to a whole bunch of young people in the community. When you tell somebody that you can be who you are and you can be smart and you can be scientific, it opens up a new world. What oftentimes happens in schools is we say, well, you have to not be that so you can be something else. But if you can be both at the same time, you know, a la two chains, um, then, then you can open up a whole new world. And so my work is just that. I can tell you something about an Afronat. It's very rare, plus I heard it's so about Ken. It's a wrap with a science message. Well, hold up, I'm off Newton. I'm on an Einstein. I like Einstein because Einstein's mind is like mine. His formula was E equals MC squared, which is weird because me is your favorite MC squared. Yeah. Right, so that's regular bars, but that's Newton's laws of motion in a nutshell. And I think, you know, that's natural for young people who don't do well in class. Like, you hear them outside rapping about everything with such brilliance and eloquence and, and beauty with metaphor and an analogy and it's layered and it's, it's, it's textually deep, you know what I mean? And, but it's not around what we want them to do well and academically because we told them that it has no connection to what they can do academically. And when we reintroduce them to the fact that they are brilliant on their own terms, with their own forms of expression, that being hip hop is being scientific. They own that, they believe that. Half the issues we have with STEM with people of color is not about the intellectual ability, it's about the belief. It's about the, the sense of self. So if we could knock those things out in one shot, like it's relevant and it's who I am, it connects to me historically, um, emotionally, spiritually, then the world is opened up. And, and, and so that's what my work is. My work is, you know, not to be like, you know, to, to over say it or overstate it, but my work is to knock down the doors to let young people in, especially the young people that have been told their whole lives in school that they're worthless because they, they have worth, they have value, and they can showcase their brilliance in these disciplines that we say is only for the best and brightest. When Dr. Emden looks at STEM and the communities of color, it's more than what's next, it's our future. Education is a civil rights issue of our time. 
STEM education is at the height of that issue. Um, we know that if you work in STEM, you make 26 times more money than a person who doesn't. Uh, we know that right now in Silicon Valley, there's, there are technology firms and startups that have less than 1% of people of color in it in 2016. So if you understand that this is not just about doing a discipline, but rather because, because of equity, because of doing what's right, and because of being able to sustain our families and our communities, that we're not just abused, we're taking and we're not, they're, they're taking from us and we're not giving anything back. For those reasons alone, should be why we focus on STEM. A STEM education isn't just for use in an isolated laboratory. It's essential for living your life to its fullest. Science, technology, engineering, math, don't avoid them in school. They can be challenging, but rewarding, difficult, but fun. See you next time on The Color of STEM. Think STEM. For more information on The Color of STEM, go to our website, www.thecolorofstem.com.